Now, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, that's Bola Tinubu, has met with leaders of the organized labor and members of the civil society. The town hall meeting in Abuja was organized by the Labor Directorate of the Campaign Council. Now, some of those in attendance at the meeting were the labor leader, Ayuba Waba, his trade union Congress counterpart, Festus Osifo, Tinubu's running mate, Kashim Shetima, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gwajabia Mila. Our nation has experienced many trials, battles, independence, wars, democracy, have all been fought for and won. It's fragile. Democracy is not easy to manage. The competitiveness, the insults, the abuse, the frustrations, but yet democracy is the best form of governance, accountability, and transparency. For us, the challenges ahead are profound, but much more subtle than those of the past. We must do more than merely overcome the challenges. We must create a better, fairer, more just and compassionate nation. Our rise analyst uh, Kayode Otitoju joins us now to discuss Tinubu's pledge to the Nigerian workers and what a Tinubu presidency could offer for workers. It's great to have you again on Newsday. Welcome and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now let's get straight into it. Um, y y I think it's wonderful for him to list a long uh, list of achievements, his track record, uh, so to speak, in governance and uh, in creating jobs and uh, in boosting industry. However, part of the legacy that uh, hasn't been touched in campaigns is uh, Tinubu's legacy of taxation. Now, ta taxation in itself is not a bad thing. Of course, he used taxes, citizens' taxes, to, to fund Lagos State in essence. However, now, if we're looking at the political climate, the state of the nation, going to where we're going, uh, do you think that his track record will continue in his, if he is to win? In his tenure as president, is he somebody who could uh, turn it around on us and, in essence, disappoint the labor force by increasing taxation? Well, the taxation became necessary when the, uh, the local government, you know, uh, was stopped, and he had to really manage Lagos State, okay? And by so doing, you know, they had to look at areas that were taxable, but that were not being taxed. And again, in financing some infrastructure that couldn't be captured by the normal budgeting, annual budgeting, it resulted into, you know, uh, concession and that was how you know Lake Epe corridor was concessioned to uh, SCC and by concession it means that you build you operate and transfer okay uh, so he was able to manage and by so doing he added to engagement of uh, people who will have been otherwise jobless because the concessionaires had to employ laborers, the canteen people had to feed the laborers and by so doing there was a sort of multiplier effect. Uh, but that shouldn't be, that is even not the focus of our discussion. The focus of our discussion is engaging the labor force through the NLC and saying, this is what I have for you if I win. This is what I will do, okay? And uh, by so doing, I have to give credit to uh, Comrade uh, Issa uh, Aremu, 
who is the director of labor in the Tinumbu uh, 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 campaign, campaign uh, organization. Okay? By arranging something that is useful to the party and useful to the, to the candidate. By so doing, you see the president of the labor bringing his own demand, you know, uh, list. This is what we need if you win. This is what we want you to do if we win. And you two now telling us the loopholes, you know, oil theft, all sorts of things, how you block all those. You are able to say it to the public. Unlike the Chatham uh, organizer, Chatham, London uh, Chatham House, the organizer didn't do it well, like Isa Remo. The organizer got their principal there and asked the principal to be asking questions that will have been asked by the principal. Okay? By so doing, changing the normal working of Chatham, whereby candidate or whoever comes there is the one that answer all questions. So credit to Haremu, and I think credit to Tinumbu, and that is why I can understand why the handlers haven't allowed him to come to the Arise, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, town hall. Town hall. This is a brilliant man. This is a man with pedigree. This is a man that knows how to handle his own image by himself. Okay? Though you can't do everything by yourself. But see the few questions he answered by himself. Nobody could fault him. The eloquence, you know, the sincerity, and even giving facts and figures. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I still have to know the head of the Directorate of Foreign Affairs for that Tinumbu uh, uh, campaign committee that shattered the Shatam. You get my point? So, now, Tinumbu started by saying, I'm the best. Any politician. <laughs> If you call uh, Peter Obi here, he will say, I'm the best. If you call, call uh, Prince uh, Adebayo, Adewole Adebayo, he will say, I'm the best. Okay? How are you the best? Now tell us. And he has taken time to tell us why he considers him to be the best for the job. And by so doing, many of us, we buy into that. Labor, which transcend all nooks and crannies of Nigeria, the Labor Congress, not the Labor Party. You know, they have seen that actually this man is sincere and there is pedigree to fall on. So these are what this type of media houses are meant for and are meant to do. And that's what we are doing. Okay? Look, uh, funny enough, I'm not even a media man. I read geography. And uh, when I felt like going to a profession, I went to Shatan Institute of Transport and whatever. Being in the media, this thing is just by accident. And I'm accident that is dated back to over 40 years when I was the PRO of the Student Union in the University of Ibadan. Then Commissioner for Information. Now an arise part time <laughs> analyst. You, you get my point. And by so doing, I've come across most of the people that are even fighting. Is it Bayo Adenunga? Is it Dele Alake? Is it uh, Nduka Obe Abena? All these people I've come across. I met Adenunga, um, uh, Bayo Ade. He was the head of the news then. And by then I was to, you know, pop up the image of my principal, the governor of Ekiti State then. That's how your fire share. So I had to go to media houses, okay? And to tell uh, Adenuga that, please help me tell, 
your uh, colleagues. Baba Femi Ojudu is a native of Ekiti to bear with our government and let so now even this day I went to this day on getting there the chairman of the editorial board who is now the commissioner for environment in Lagos State was not around and I'd already written them two weeks earlier that we are coming to meet with them and you know solicit for support they said I can't meet other members of the editor. I say I must. I can't come from Mikiti. Sorry, give me just a second. I can't come from Mikiti and you say I won't meet. So, Olani Yonu, other people, they came together, I met them. When I left, two days later, I saw the governor, Ayofayoshe, and he said, ah, Commissioner, why did you go to some media houses and be fighting them? You don't fight media houses. We need them more than you know, uh, you think uh, you, uh, we need them more than you think they need us. So, on that note, I want to say that the Nombu campaign council uh, need arise, and this day, more than arise, need them. And they must put things together in such a way that every vote that must be campaigned to get is gotten. Because even George Bush was able to win his election in the year 2000 by just margin of 537 votes in America. So every vote counts. So please, shield your sword. <laughs> Let's work together. Okay. What you are doing to uh, TVC, do it to us, advertise in us, and let's all of us work right. together. Okay, back to the discussion. Go okay. ahead. Um, <laughs> what I found most significant was when the, like you pointed out, the NLC president presented, you know, the workers' charter of demands. Based on what um, the presidential candidate of the APC outlined as, as regards what would be his focus, it didn't really seem to be lined up with what was presented because the focus was a war on corruption. And I know that was an opportunity for him to be relatable. He gave his history and how he, has, how he shares common values with them. So at that moment, when that was presented, and you, when you compare it to what he outlined, did you really see that relatability when it came to values? Yes, 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 I see. I saw it. Because uh, he had, in his opening speech, he had already, you know, pampered labor. Huh? We work together, we have been together and fight for democracy. We are in it together now, and they have been employer of labor in all facets of what I've done now to even make more people employable. We will see the blockage of people who steal our wealth and whatever. What's corruption? People who are stealing our wealth, we couldn't get our whatever. Then you said that we did decisively with uh, saboteurs. So he doesn't have to mention everything one by one. In his, this thing, he has told Labour, he told Labour that they will collaborate and work together if they work with him to, to, to succeed in his uh, you know, uh, journey to presidency. All right. Well, uh, th thank you so much for that. I do wish we could have gone deeper into the how, which is why I was honing in on taxation. But I'm sure we'll be able to continue this conversation on another opportunity. Kaede Otsitoji, it's always a pleasure to get your insights uh, on, on these hot issues across Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time.